All right. Everybody hear me? Good to see everybody tonight for our second round of VBS. Looking forward uh, to um, this class and all that we're going to talk about uh, this evening. Let's start off with a prayer. Of course, we want to continue to pray for Brother Barry uh, and uh, Nita and, and their family. Is there any other prayer requests that we would like to uh, bring to light before we begin? Anything else? All right, let's pray together. Father, Lord, you are our God. We praise your name. We thank you uh, for blessing us so richly. Uh, we thank you for Jesus. Please help us to become like him, uh, conform us to his image. Um, help us to see him as more valuable than anything else in this world. Uh, please help us to kill our selfish will and our pride uh, and uh, synchronize our will with yours. Uh, Father, we pray for Barry now. We pray for Nita. We pray for Phil. We pray for Kay and their entire family. Please uh, heal Barry if that be your will. Please allow him to continue preaching and, and teaching and uh, continue to be a servant of, uh, of you and, and of your word. Um, Father, please be with uh, all of those in our congregation who are facing illness and uh, sickness and, and suffering. Uh, please be with us in our mission to seek and save the lost. Help us to never forget uh, the purpose of the church. Help us to always live out our calling and your mission here in this world. And uh, Please guard our hearts from apathy and help us to become all that you want us to be. Uh, we thank you for your word and this opportunity that we have tonight to unfold it and study it together so that we may come closer to your heart. It's through your precious son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Um, all right. Yes, Robin. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Good. Yeah. I went to see him Saturday morning and he wasn't able to even talk then, so I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad. Oh, great, great. He's off the bypass then. Good. Good, 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 good. Well, prayers for Thanksgiving for that. Uh, for sure. I'm going to turn this around so I don't trip. Um, okay, so uh, take out your Bible and turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Uh, keep your thumb there or maybe put your marker on Acts chapter 2. We're, we're not going to look uh, there just yet. We're going to look at some other passages. Uh, but that's where we're going to primarily be tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, one of the greatest sermons uh, presented in the Bible, Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost, which um, was uh, the establishment of the New Testament church, one of the greatest sermons that we see preached within uh, the Bible. And what we're going to do, uh, the direction that we're going to take, there's, um, you know, in, in preparing this uh, and, and studying for it, there's, there's so many different uh, directions that you could go, many different applications that you could uh, draw from this sermon. So what we're going to be doing tonight um, is... Uh, going to be in keeping with our overall theme of VBS, uh, we're going to attempt to draw uh, just a few principles from the sermon and Peter's presentation of it that will help us to live fearlessly and present the gospel message just like uh, Peter did. So that's the direction that we're going to go. We're going to look at uh, principles that he employed within uh, his uh, sermon and his disposition, his attitude in delivering the sermon, uh, and, and draw applications from that so that we can emulate and imitate um, Peter in our life and live fearlessly, live courageously, and live boldly in our uh, effort to present the gospel um, to the ends of the earth. Uh, so, but, but before we do that, uh, there's a, a video uh, by Kyle Butt that goes along with this lesson. Um, I thought it was a little, little insightful. Um, I'd like to show that, and Jackie is going to uh, flash that up on the screen right now. So. Thank you. 
was the gospel of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross. And Peter explained that to them. And the next said, Jesus, bread and blood meet too. And Peter had the right product through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he told them the action steps they need to take. Repent and be baptized every one of you. And that's exactly what they did. You see, Peter was in the right place at the right time. He was prepared. And his preparation over years and years and years had allowed him to be the vessel that God had used to start the church there in Acts chapter 2. Are you prepared? When it come time, comes time for you to do something big for God, have you prepared yourself so that when that time comes, you'll be ready? Let's make sure that we are prepared when our time comes. So the first application that I think we can draw uh, that, uh, that's helpful for us as we attempt to live fearlessly in this world and present the gospel message uh, to a... Um, can you hear me? I'm back on. Okay, all right, we're good. So the first uh, application, as Kyle talked about, uh, the, th the thing that we can draw from this lesson is that Peter was ready. Peter was ready. He was ready to go out of the gate um, to prepare this sermon. Peter wasn't always ready. I remember he denied the Lord Jesus. He, um, he, he, he displayed a lot of uh, character traits that, uh, um, that, that showed that he wasn't ready uh, many times within his life. But at this point in time, in Acts chapter 2, when he presents the gospel message, he was ready. And if we want to uh, be ready, uh, fearless and fearlessly present the message of Jesus Christ, we need to be ready as well. Of course, we can't predict uh, the outcome of um, our presentation of the gospel. You can't um, uh, force somebody to believe in the saving power um, of, of, of God. But if we're going to expect opportunities uh, to come our way, then, then we need to examine several things. We, number one, we need to examine our place and position. We need to examine our place and position. Uh, although there's no uh, physical or geographical place uh, where God expects us to be in our presentation of, of this mes me message, there are certainly some spiritual locations that put us in a position to fearlessly present the message of the gospel. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6. We're going to read those three verses there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Paul says, So then let us not sleep, as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now, earlier in the letter, if you look in chapter 4, verse 13, Paul used a Greek word for sleep, that's rendered sleep uh, in the ESV, uh, koimeo, in chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 13. Uh, he, and he used it metaphorically to describe those who have uh, died, um, those who have fallen asleep. But in this passage, the next chapter over, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he uses a different Greek word um, that's rendered uh, sleep. Uh, it's katheudo. And uh, it's, also, it's also translated as sleep. But in this passage, he's not referring to dying uh, in, that, in that context in verse 6. But rather, uh, this word is referring to being unaware of God's presence, being unaware uh, willingly of God's workings, and being unaware of God's return. That's what this uh, specific word means here in this context, being unaware of God's presence, being unaware of God's workings in the world around you in the moment, and being unaware of God's imminent return, one that is asleep. 
Uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Matthew 26, verse 39. Look at an, uh, let's look at another instance in, in which we see this same Greek word used. Matthew chapter 26, verses 39 through 40. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Same word as in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 or 6. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? So, while Jesus is entering into, and I believe He's entering even in, in the garden here, uh, He's entering into the beginning phases of His separation from the Father and His experience of the full force, the full outpouring of God's wrath uh, upon Himself. And He finds His disciples, uh, His closest friends, in, in the world, um, those that have pledged their allegiance to Him and said that they would die for Him uh, and, and live for His kingdom, He finds them sleeping. They were in a condition in which they were unaware of God's presence willingly and His workings in the world, uh, which brought even more pain into the heart of the Savior. They were sleeping. They were unaware of God's presence, of what God was doing in the world uh, with, uh, w w willingly, um, and, uh, and of God's return. Um, I think especially in our day and time, it's, it's so very, very easy to fall asleep, to become unaware of God's presence uh, because of all the uh, frivolous things that, that, that are going on in, in my life, to, to become unaware of, of, of God's workings um, in, in the world and, and become unaware and live as though I'm unaware of God's imminent uh, return. Um, it's, very, uh, it's, a, it, it, it's a huge temptation that, that all of us face uh, to, um, uh, to, to embody the, the spirit of the disciples that we see here in Matthew chapter 26, to, um, to live... Uh, maybe not uh, um, consciously, but unconsciously, living, living as though our faith, even though we claim to believe, living as though our faith is just a, a fairy tale um, by, 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 our, by, by our apathetic actions, um, by our loss of interest, um, by our falling asleep. It's so very easy uh, to fall into um, that temptation and that trap. Uh, so, I want to open it up and, and ask you, uh, what do you think are some factors that contribute to us falling asleep? Maybe what are some tactics that Satan uses uh, to uh, tempt us to fall asleep in, in this way? What would you say? Sir? Sir? Oh yeah, that's a that's a big one. Yeah, um, well, I've, I mean, I've got all the time in in the world. You know, I'm I'm uh, almost 29 years old. I could say to myself, you know, I have the rest of my life to follow Jesus. Uh, why don't I spend my 29th and 30th year doing whatever I want to? Uh, but if I have that spirit, then 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 I'm never going to be. Uh, never going to live with, with, with a passion for Jesus if it doesn't begin now and if I don't make that decision in the here and now and in the moment. Yes, sir? Feeling overwhelmed with the task at hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes, uh, I, I guess, you're, you're referring to maybe burnout um, in, uh, in, in whatever task that, that, that you're doing, um, and, uh, and, and that may tempt me to... Um, lose sight of the main goal, lose sight of, of, of the mission um, when, uh, when, when I'm overwhelmed. And there's all kinds of things that cause us to be um, overwhelmed um, in, in this life. Um, Satan sends all kinds of stress and, um, and, and anxiety in, in our life, um, possibly 
to, uh, to, to cause us to, to fall asleep and to become unaware of, of God's uh, majesty and, and His work uh, w- within the world. Uh, absolutely. Very, very good point. Uh, what, what else? What would you say? There's a thousand things that we could say. Selfishness. Selfishness, yeah, yeah. I want what pleases me in the moment. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to uh, trust God that... Um, following Him and, and, and surrendering my life is going to bring more pleasure and happiness uh, in the long run, and not just in heaven, but in this life. I'm not going to trust that. I'm going to trust that my definition of happiness and pleasure is, um, is more significant and profound than, than God's definition. Yeah, I mean, all of us are tempted to fall in, in, into that. Selfishness, uh, yeah. Um, so just something to be aware of. Uh, one more. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, di- disappointment uh, through various situations. Yeah. Uh, when Satan comes and rocks our world, thinking that you know we we thought we were going to have a different outcome um, than than what happened. Um, and, uh, um, and Satan uses that and, 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 and preaches to us, you know, God's not there with you. God, God, doesn't, God doesn't care about you. Look, I mean, you thought it was going to be this way, but it turned out to be another way. Um, I, absolutely. That's, that's a, that's, I think that's a primary way that, that Satan infiltrates um, us. Yeah, for sure. Um, so there's all different kinds of um, ways, all different situations that cause us to... Um, fall asleep, um, all, all that we, we have, uh, um, everything that we've said. We could also say uh, busy schedules, uh, wrong priorities, uh, placing earthly pleasures over spiritual pleasures. Um, all of those uh, Satan uses to cause us to fall asleep spiritually, to become unaware of God's presence, to become unaware of God's workings, and to become an unaware of God's um, imminent return. So, another question: uh, What are some healthy practices that you think will help us to remain awake to God's presence, God's workings, and God's return? What can we do right now to stay awake to help us to fight? What would you say? Yeah, right. I think a big thing is associate yourself with Christians. Mm-hmm. Oh, huge. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one course is as broken easily as three courses. Right. Absolutely. Yes, yes. That's a very biblical principle. Yeah. Show, show them Christian friends. Mm hmm. Chances are you're going to be doing what's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, when, 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 um, uh, when, when we're bound together, when we're spending time with one another, and when we're fellowshipping uh, with, 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 each, with each other, bearing each other's burdens. Uh, you know, that, that, that's a gift. That's a gift of grace um, that God gives to us, is the gift of one another, um, is, is the gift of, of a place that's not just a, a mere uh, social club or not just a, a place where um, I, I can come and, and, uh, and I don't know, just a, a, a place where I can just come and, and be a part of a, of a body, but, but a place that acts like a spiritual hospital. Um, and I can come and have, I know that I have people here that, that truly care about me um, and, and want the best for me. That, that's God's gift to us um, that we need to take advantage of. And all of us need to be aware. We need to be aware of people that are, that are hurting and reach out um, so that we can embody um, that um, and, and help people not to fall asleep um, and to help um, our fellow Christians to stay awake. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what, what else? What, what else can we do? Uh, what are some healthy practices that will help us to stay awake? What would you say? Continually studying His Word. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Um, that's uh, the agent of our transformation, the Word of God. That's the way that the Spirit works on our heart. Um, and, uh, and if we're not in the Word um, daily... 
um, and, and, and not just, not just a, you know, a methodical reading and, uh, and a, a uh, you know, I've, I've, I have to do this kind of reading, but, but a meditation, a digestion um, on, on what, what I read uh, and, uh, and making, a, a, it a part, making it a part of me uh, and, and um, preaching the promises of God to myself every morning, every day, and believing them to be the rock of my existence. Um, absolutely, yeah, that's, um, that's absolutely imperative uh, for us to live um, in a state of, um, uh, in a, to live in a state that we are awake. Um, so, if we are uh, to fearlessly present the message of the gospel, we must remain awake. We must not fall asleep to God's presence, uh, to God's workings, and to God's imminent return, and live as if all of those three are um, the bedrock of, of, of our lives. Um, okay, so let's look at uh, another, another principle um, uh, here. Um, if we're going to uh, present the message fearlessly like Peter, and this is, this is a, a principle that we see uh, within, um, uh, with, within his um, speech, within his sermon. We need to know where our power comes from. We need to know the power that we have at hand, the power that we are given as Christians. Now, obviously, we're not given the same kind of power uh, that the apostles were given in Acts chapter 2 um, in, a, in a miraculous way as they, they speak in tongues. That's, um, that's, that's what I'm getting at. But we're still equipped with a power um, that's par, that far surpasses um, that uh, kind of a power today. Um, turn with me to Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. And this is a verse that Kyle quoted just a moment ago. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. Romans 1, 16 through 17. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Uh, so here Paul says that the gospel... The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God which has a transformative effect, a power that each one of us has not created, that hasn't originated with, with us, with, with, with our own self, from, from our own mind, uh, but a power that has been granted to us to proclaim uh, to a lost and dying world. Uh, Paul alludes to this power of the gospel again in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. He says, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved as Christians, it is the power of God. So the message of the cross here, also known as the gospel, refers to God's ability to deliver humanity from sin and future judgment. And in this context, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul says that it's foolishness to those who are perishing because it's disguised with weakness. Um, uh, just, uh, just, just think about the way that God chose, and we're, we've been talking about this in our uh, Sunday, morning one, uh, Sunday morning room 113 class, uh, the way that God chose to conquer the kingdom of, of darkness. He didn't choose to... Uh, exert his power and his dominance through, uh, through a show of earthly force uh, like, like we are accustomed to, uh, like, like we see, uh, like in uh, like Russia and Ukraine, Russia is trying to take over uh, either all of Ukraine or part of U Ukraine, who knows, but they are attempting to exert their power and their dominance over that other nation by force. That's the way the world works. If you want to conquer something, if you want to 
um, destroy another power and, 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 and rule yourself, then by in a fallen world, that's the way that you do it. And that's the way that it has, it has been done ever since Genesis chapter 3. But uh, God conquers uh, the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the kingdom has been ushered into the world by completely different, uh, by completely different means. Jesus conquered uh, not through power and force um, and dominance, but Jesus conquered through humility. Jesus conquered through becoming a servant. Jesus conquered through suffering. Jesus conquered through self-sacrifice. Jesus conquered through a cross. And that is complete foolishness to a world that's lost and dying because it doesn't understand the way that God conquers and the way the kingdom of heaven operates, which is, which is completely contrary uh, to the kingdom of darkness. Uh, but that message that message of the cross, the message of the gospel, is power. It's power, Paul says, to those who are being saved because we are a people who have been transformed by that power and see it as it really is. Uh, see, we see the truth of that power. Only the gospel has the power to convict the human heart uh, of a sinner and transform their hearts into one that mirrors and reflects the heart of God. Uh, the world today looks to all, all kinds of solutions to uh, combat the problem of the corrupted heart of humanity. Just turn on the news and you'll see all of their suggested solutions to the problem of corruption within man, uh, but none of it will ulti ultimately solve man's internal depravity um, that we have within us. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ can do so. And that is the power of salvation. And that is the power, the gospel, the message of the cross that's disguised in weakness. And every single one of you carry that. Every one of you carry that in your heart and you carry it in your hand if you're holding a Bible. Um, and that's the power that we have that um, destroy strongholds um, and, uh, and, and conquers. Uh, uh, so, and that's the power that Peter uses in this uh, sermon in Acts chapter 2. Uh, and, and we need to remember that as we present the gospel message, that it has great, um, great power. Uh, so lastly, uh, one last thing, and then we'll... Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We believe, and we talk so much about prayer. We're commanded to pray. We teach to pray. But I strongly believe that we really don't believe the power and the willingness of the Holy Spirit to really work in us and through us. Sometimes we'll share stories with one another in private, but God forbid that we ever share stories and testimonies with our brothers and sisters uh, about uh, how God has affected our lives personally. Sure. And I think, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we downrate, uh, as they say, uh, as a brotherhood, we downrate the, uh, the power and the willingness of the Holy Spirit. Sure, sure. Um, and uh, Dan, I think you're hitting on... Uh, the basic battle of every human heart, uh, the, 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 our, our basic battle in, in, our, in our fight against sin is the battle to believe, uh, the, the battle to actually believe uh, in all of the promises of God, including uh, the promise that uh, prayer works. Uh, and uh, none, of, none of us uh, believe that fully. We are being saved, Paul says. We're not fully and completely sanctified, um, the, the text says. Um, all of us are um, in a process of growth, in a process of spiritual development, um, that, uh, that we are being transformed continually um, into, in, into the image of, of Jesus Christ. Um, and that's just, uh, that, that's just something that, we, that, that um, um, all of us, you know, need, need to work on and, and develop, but believing believing in, in the power of, 
um, of, of prayer. And that comes through more prayer. Keep praying. Pray to God, help me in my unbelief. Help me to believe. Um, that, sh- that, should, that should be in every single one of our prayer lives. God, help me to believe. Help me to believe in your promises because I'm a weak, sinful human that is in desperate need of you and cannot possibly do anything by my own power and strength. Um, so that's, yeah, very, 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 very good point. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, so, right. Just to... Look how much faith we have. We got yeah. Mountains that we see falling into the <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and that's, that's, uh, um, that, that's something that all of us need, need to keep in mind. But um, it's, uh, you know, we've talked about this in, in, our, in our Thursday morning um, class. Uh, when we find a problem in our life, Um, and you don't have to look too hard to find problems in your spiritual life. (laughs) I I just have to um, peer open my heart just a, just like a fraction of a centimeter to, (laughs) and I'll I'll, I'll see all kinds of craziness uh, come out, but uh, when I do find a problem, and uh, I respond to that problem in repentance and humility and 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 in desperation and and in and in and in faith um, that's not cause for um, uh, overwhelming sorrow in which i'm i'm tempted to feel um, that's cause for rejoicing because i have found what uh, i need to work on and god uh, being the god that he is desires my salvation and my spiritual growth even more than I do. And he's going to help me with that as I completely surrender to him and uh, in, in, his, in his will. So, but yeah, very, very, very good comment. Um, okay, let's see. So uh, one more. Um, I always get lost. Um, one more point here. Um, okay, so one more thing that we need to examine that, that Peter um, is, examined is our, uh, the people that we present the message to, um, our audience. Um, our audience today, when we present the message of the gospel, the message of the cross, as Peter did in Acts chapter 2, um, our audience is every creature, um, every person, every creature. And our lifestyle of fearless faith is supposed to attract attention. It's supposed to draw people as we submit to Christ um, and keep in step with the Spirit and become the salt um, of the earth. Um, and, if, and if we're not... Um, if, if people aren't looking at us, maybe not everybody is because, um, um, I mean, Jesus even says that, um, that there are going to be more people lost than there are saved. But if at least a few people aren't looking at our lives and saying, wow, I want, that's, that's somebody that I want to be like. I want to be like that person because I see something different about them in their character. I can see that they have gone through a radical transformation and, and are completely different um, than, uh, than the world. Um, if, if that's not um, something that we're striving for, none of us are perfect and none of us have, are, have reached that kind of a point ultimately, but, but if, if, if that's not something that we are striving toward, then uh, we're not going to reach every creature. We're not going to reach our target audience, which is everyone. Um, so we need to be looking at our, examining our own life. Um, okay, so let's stop right there, and um, we'll pick up, we'll actually pick up with uh, Acts chapter 2 uh, when, we, uh, when we come back. Um, I guess um, seven, 
720, uh, we'll, we'll come back in here.